Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, we're live. Welcome to the CS9 um, Lambda School Demo Day. My name is Ryan Hamlin. I'm the program director of the Full Stack Web program here at Lambda School, and I'm excited to um, to have you all joining us. Those of you who are kind of coming in for the first time, um, we're going to be basically demoing these students' amazing projects that they worked on. Um, also, we're going to be go having students kind of walk through what they built. Um, you know, talk talk to us about who they are. So you get a really awesome opportunity to um, to get to know some of our students who are recently, you know, reaching the tail end of their program and moving out into the job market. Um, for those of you who don't really know too much about Lambda School, I'm assuming you know at least a little bit because you're here. Um, but let me just kind of talk to you about the program of what we're offering here at Lambda School and kind of how it's a revolutionary way to, um, you know, change careers and jump into a new educational field or, um, you know, just level up your knowledge and, and um, you know, just change the trajectory of your life and uh, walk through some of the things that are that I think that are really, really cool here before we begin. Um, so Lambda School kind of started around this premise that we wanted to reshape um, education. We wanted to reshape the way that that um, that you know the world kind of approaches um, learning new skills and challenges, and um, we wanted to focus heavily, of course, on the the skills that are necessary for students to be able to uh, students who come to the program are, will be able to leave the program job ready that they can um, enter whatever field they they focus on um, here at Lambda School and be ready to contribute to their teams on day one. So these students that you're about to, to witness have actually gone through what we call the full stack web and computer science program here at Lambda School. Um, some of them have been here uh, for, the, for the general amount of time, the, the original um, six months, and some of them have been in here for up to maybe nine or 10 months, depending on um, you know, where they fell in their start date and have come and, and maybe gone through um, mentorship programs as well as you know, working through our PM ship program. Um, so we kind of have a mishmash group of students who, who had the opportunity to start at different times here. Um, and it's really amazing. We kind of threw them together on day one of what we call Lambda Labs, where the students get a chance to take a culmination of their skill set and drive that into building a project that we, the staff and engineering team, decide for them. And we kind of put them together in a group. We give them some rough, really rough wireframes and uh, sort of some a general direction. And we say, you have a few weeks to complete this project. And they, you know, took the leadership upon themselves. They, um, you know, took the, the exhaustive of what it, what it seems amount of time to, um, to essentially kind of figure out if what they were doing, uh, you know, figure out their technical stack, figure out what problems they were going to solve with the technologies and stuff that they knew. A lot of them were working, you know, every one of them at least was working with third party APIs, um, you know, building these amazing projects. So what you're about to see today is sort of a culmination of all those things. Um, so I just want to make sure that you are all well, well aware of that it is actually an amazing process that they get to be, a, you know, that, that, that these students have worked really, really hard on these projects. Um, and you know, some of them did not even need, did not even know how to code um, just a few short months ago. Um, and they approached this problem and they hit it headstrong and they and they moved right into um, right into the building process. So if you're just joining us uh, once again, um, you know, this is our this is our Lambda demo day. We're excited to broadcast these projects to you. What we're gonna do is I have a YouTube playlist. I am going to, you know, show off their demo video that we have helped them produce. Um, and then we're going to give the platform over to the students to go ahead and talk about what they um, they achieved throughout the process. If you would love to um, contact any of our students, um, they're going to tell you they're going to tell you where they um, are looking for a job or where they currently reside. And that'll give that'll give you an opportunity to potentially reach out to us. In the um, description link for this video, you should have a contact email that will allow you to contact one of our career services members and uh, get in contact with them if um, your you know your engineering team you know is looking for um, any of our uh, any of these graduates in your area or location. Um, 
personally, I've been, you know, I, I've, I've been able to see and work with every single one of these students. I've been able to see the majority of them uh, work through these project, projects and work through their challenges. And I got a chance to, to meet with them afterwards and get them to talk about their experiences. And I can tell you that it's, it's pretty amazing what they've been able to come up with. So I think we're all in for a big treat. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, I'll just go ahead and I'll set this thing up. Um, we'll go ahead and I will um, share my screen and uh, then we'll, we'll start with our first project um, called ResWrite. Um, and this project was put together by the team of Cruz Bent Brantley, Kevin Tan, uh, Nicole Phillips uh, was a part of their team, um, uh, Nicholas Brennan and Natalie uh, Sheenham. And we'll go ahead and uh, yeah, get that started right away. Just make sure I have the right screen for you. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and then afterwards we'll have you all speak to, uh, to your process. Searching for a job can be stressful. Figuring out where to even begin to building your resume can be overwhelming. Welcome to ResWrite, the app for building your resume the right way. People often have work experience or education backgrounds in more than one area. And during a job search, you're often applying for more than one specific job title. ResWrite makes it so you can keep everything in one place and pick and choose what information you want rendered on different resumes. Welcome to the dashboard, where you'll initially be directed to enter your full name and other basic personal information in the settings section. Once you've completed that, You'll be directed to populate the different resume fields in job title, summary, skills, experience, and education. Job title is the title you'd like rendered on your specific resume. You can click the pencil to add a specific name. These can also be deleted and edited as needed. Summary is a personal summary that you're going to add to your resume aimed at getting the position you're seeking. It should say something about your past, present, and future. These can be edited copied and deleted as needed. The skills section is where you enter skills you'd like rendered on your resume. These are entered in specific skill groups and grouped together. For example, a skill group web development would have the associated skills, CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. These can be deleted and edited as needed also. Experience is where you're gonna add your previous employer information for your work history. These can be edited and created in the same way as the other components. Here you're going to enter your previous title, company information, the location, your dates of employment, and a short description. Education is where you're going to enter the previous schools attended and degrees or certificates you've obtained. Here you're going to enter the institution name, the degree, the field of study, and the dates you attended that institution. When you've completed these different sections, you can go back up to the dashboard and check the specific information you'd like rendered on your resume. Check the boxes in the contact section, choose a resume title, then a personal summary you'd like rendered, the skills sections you'd like included, the previous employers you'd like included, and the previous degrees you'd like included. Save those changes and you'll be taken to the templates page where you'll have the option to choose between the traditional, modern, and elegant formats. These will render only the checked information from the dashboard. To export your resume, click the button in the upper right hand corner, then download and save. This will give you a PDF version of your resume that you can save on your local computer or send to your employer. Finally, if you'd like the option to build multiple resumes, go down to the billing section and sign up for a membership. This application used a MERN stack, that's MongoDB, Express, Node, and React, in addition to Firebase as a platform on the front end. The app was built by Cruz Brantley, Kevin Tan, Nicholas Brennan, and myself, Natalie Shannon. Welcome to Knowledge Rocket. Where you can Ooh, sorry about that. Spoiler alert. Okay. Awesome. So let's shift over now to our Zoom Hangout link so you can see the lovely students as they talk about what they did and what, you know, what they worked on and what they built. So, okay, we have uh, the team from ResWrite who once again was Cruz Brantley, Kevin Tan, Nicholas Brennan, and Natalie, Natalie Shinnam. So group, why don't you go ahead and kind of unmute yourselves, um, start talking about what you did for the project. Tell us who you are, where you're from, and let us get to all know you. That was amazing. I think that's an application that I can speak for all of us when I say 
I wish that I had had that at any point in time, and that's going to be very, very useful for anyone to uh, to work with in the future. So, okay, the time is now yours, Rest Ride, for the next 10 or so minutes as you talk about all these fun things. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, so my name is Kevin Tan. Uh, I'm from New York City, at, but I'm also open to relocating um, for job opportunities. Uh, my biggest contribution to this project was uh, implementing the Stripe, um, Stripe API. And um, I also wrote the logic for the back end and the front end for free and paid memberships. Uh, my favorite part of uh, this project was um, actually implementing the PDF export. Um, it was something that uh, I kind of imagined and, and like it kind of came, came along like really well um, based on my plan. Uh, and that plan was just to um, look for uh, like the DOM element that the template style was going to be uh, encapsulated, like all the, all the design, the, the CSS and the um, select the information and that could work that's a PDF to um, export. Awesome. Fun stuff. Okay, who is next? So Kevin Tan, New York City, right? Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. All right, I'll go next. Um, my name is Chris Brantley. I'm from Arkansas, originally Southwest Arkansas. Now I'm in the Fayetteville area. I'm looking for work around there. Um, I worked on Resume Maker and I did a lot of the initial React framework, like setting up the pages. Uh, there's a lot of pages on this project. Um, and also worked with the data structure and getting the, uh, like the way we had to set up the resumes with multiple resumes was interesting in that we had to have like the original data set and then we also had templates um, where we had to have Booleans for each value for each resume. So it was a pretty, Big undertaking and getting all that set up. And that's where I've focused the majority of my time. Awesome. Yeah, I look forward to big things. So it's Cruz Brantley. And remind us again where you're from one last time. I'm going to ask everyone that. <laughs> all right, uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas area, Northwest Arkansas. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Cruz. Um, I'm Natalie Shannon, and I'm the, I think the last person who's present here working on the project. So, um, I did a lot of work on the front end also, getting React started and building out components and then setting up templates and rendering data. I work a lot with um, just the whole file, file structure and then getting things working and a lot of details and then also on the design of the project, so. Awesome, and where are you, where are you from, Natalie? Spokane, Washington. Spokane, okay, so yeah, if you're up there in that area, uh, this is Natalie Shinham. Um, the team was res right, and you guys, you all said that uh, that Nicholas wasn't here, is that right? I guess not. Um, okay. My name's actually Shenham. Shenham. Okay. <laughs> Natalie Shenham. Okay. Awesome. I got it. Um, we won't we won't forget that now. Thank you so much. What a what an awesome project. Um, it's amazing. Once again, just to remind everyone who's joining us, um, this this team put this together um, in a few short weeks, and they were given an idea and some rough wireframes, no design files or anything like that. They kind of just had a Trello board and a project manager and a team, and they knew they were gonna be building something on day one, and then they got the project assigned to them, and they just just took it, took to, took it to town. They did a really, really good job on it, and I think um, it's pretty darn impressive. So, okay, um, the team at ResWrite, um, thank you so much. Uh, what a wonderful, what a, what a wonderful project. Now we're gonna move on to our next demo, and that's gonna be the team with Knowledge Rocket. So um, this is a fun little quiz tool, um, and this is, yeah, a little fun opportunity here for you to see what they built. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Um, remember, once again, those of you who are joining us, joining us now, um, if, you, you know, if you're interested in getting into contact with any of our students, go ahead and click the link down in the uh, description and uh, you'll, you'll find an email down there. You'll be able to see how you can get a hold of, uh, hold of us and kind of figure it out. Um, awesome, I'm gonna go ahead and sh uh, start this video now and we'll turn our time over to the Knowledge Rocket team. Welcome to Knowledge Rocket, where you can launch your learning and join the future of teaching. Now, what is a Knowledge Rocket? A knowledge Rocket is a customizable quiz that you can grade and send to your students on a scheduled interval of two days, two weeks, and two months after any initial lecture or at any point you wish. So now we have our Rockets. The Rockets are the general template of having a title, 
having review text for each of the two days, two weeks, and two months, giving you equal opportunity to change it up if you wish. You also get a review question, and you get to pick between one of four answers. It's a wonderful little thing to have. Now, let's look at one that's already been built out. So we know the British invaded the United States, and in what year did the White House burn down? Well, it's 1814, which we can check off this handy little checkbox. Now we can go check out the classes. So the class just starts out with just entering a name, but after that, you can add in students using your imports TSV, like this with a handy little button. Let me make sure you can see it first. So you can just add a few more if you'd like, and they will pop up there. You can also do it. Oh no, I'm not sure what happened there. Let me go double check. Go back here. Welcome to Knowledge Rock. We can check off this handy little checkbox. Now we can go check out the classes. Sorry about so that. So the class just starts out with just entering a name. But after that, you can add in students using your import CSV, like this with a handy little button. Let me make sure you can see it first. So you can just add a few more if you'd like. And they will pop up there. You can also do it. I guess that is where we are cut off. I don't know what happened there. It must have been a technical difficulty in the production, post-production part of that film. That is so sad. I'm so sorry, Knowledge Rocket. Your project looks wonderful, and it's an amazing project. So that last feature, why don't you all, we kind of have to be impromptu. That's the nature of the business sometimes, right? So why don't you all jump in? Uh, the team who built Knowledge Rocket, just so that you all are aware of really quick, um, was Brandon Alexander, um, Moises Dobreganes, um, Axon Ru uh, Ruiz, David Finley, and Justin Hong. So members from that team, why don't you go ahead and just let us know kind of the, what those those final features were. Talk about your project and then start introducing yourselves one by one. So. I'm Brandon Alexander. Oh. You wanna go ahead? Go for it. Go for it, Brandon. All right. I'm Brandon Alexander. Uh, uh, the missing links, I do believe, was like us showing you the rocket page, how we would build them out, and then also um, our billing and our settings that we allowed in our website. Um, we also had a whole bunch of other things that were really interesting to deal with, especially like our data analytics that we didn't quite get in there. But um, yeah, I'm from Hartwell, Georgia. I'm in Northeast Georgia. I'm open to moving to anywhere. I mainly worked on the back end routing, the back end testing, and then sh dealing with Stripe on the front end and back end and making the data visualization points for the front end. Okay, and remind us who you are again. I'm Brandon Alexander. I'm from Harwell, Georgia. Thanks, Brandon. Awesome. Yeah, sorry again about the that last like, you know, 10, 15 second clip that didn't get finished. So thank you. Good, good stuff there. So it was integrated with Stripe and the billing page and the settings pages. Um, and then all of your rockets page were, were the last things that we weren't able to see. Okay. Um, who wants to speak next? Hi, uh, I'm Axon Ruiz. I currently live on the beautiful island of Oahu and I'm looking for remote positions. Um, what I mostly worked on for this project was mostly integrating with the SendGrid API, um, as well as creating the forms for actually updating and adding rockets. Um, the most difficult part that sticks out the most, um, some of you may have heard already, is time zones. Uh, I've worked with them a little bit before, but never had, I had such a problem where all my code stopped working at 2 p.m. exactly every day. But once I figure it out, that just means it's midnight UTC, it all worked out. Awesome, good uh, good problem to have solved. And remind us again who you are, Axon? My name is Axon Ruiz and I'm a full stack web developer. Okay, from, the, from Hawaii, but looking for remote opportunities potentially. Yes, awesome. sir. Thank you, who's next? Um, Sorry, am I sharing right now? You're not sharing, but we can hear you and see you really well. So if you're going to share those last couple features, um, uh, you know, feel free. Oh, no. Okay, I don't know, Zoom's being really weird. Um, so my name is Justin uh, Hong. I'm based in Los Angeles County. Uh, sorry about like our video getting cut off there in the middle. Um, so, 
So I'm looking for positions in Southern California or remote positions. Um, so some of the things I worked on were the uh, UI for the project, um, and then also the form where the classes were being made off. And that's kind of where the video got cut off. And I also worked on the um, importing and exporting students from a CSV file. And I think that was the most interesting thing I worked on for this project, because uh, I never really worked with, um, I guess, data in that format. So I had to kind of like massage massage the data and format it so that it could get saved to the database um, correctly. So yeah. Awesome. Okay, and is there, is Ju uh, Justin's here, Justin Hong, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was you. Okay, Justin okay. Hong, and you're in I Southern California. Three people. Okay. Yeah. Moises and then David Finley. I didn't see David. But if you're here, David. Uh, he had to go to the hospital. That's right. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Well, hopefully everything's everything's all right. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Knowledge Rocket. That's awesome. One of my very, very first jobs as an engineer was actually building like a quiz making tool that turned into like a content management generator, a lead generator, which, you know, which famous Disney princess are you was the, the tool that I built over at Quizzer. So I've worked in this space a little bit, uh, but I was really, 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 yeah, yeah, junior starting out at that company. So um, awesome. Really, really good stuff, gang. These are two amazing projects. And these are the types of things that, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we see often as Lambda School students reach this phase in the program. Um, not only are they able to tackle really hard and sophisticated problems um, and build some you know, quality software, um, most of them didn't know how to do any of that um, the few months prior. And if you don't really know much about our model here at Lambda School, we are a completely free upfront program. And what we do is we actually, we have an income share agreement that once you join the program, you get all of your education upfront for free. So then you move out into the job field and once you get a job, there's a contract between us, uh, the school and the student. So we don't actually succeed as an organization until our students do. So you can very well bet that we're teaching and you know delivering the content and providing the you know a world class education the best way that we possibly know how. And it's been really really fun uh, to see this company grow and to see all these awesome eager and hungry students come into the program and you know put their best foot forward and really dive into this curriculum. And to see where they come out on this end of the program is actually my favorite part of Lambda School, where the students have been able to get to, how far they've been able to come. Um, so yeah, once again, if you're interested in getting to know any of our students, if they live in any of your areas as hiring partners, or if you're not a hiring partner yet and you're joining in and you're tuning in with us, go ahead and uh, reach out to us via, uh, via any of the description items and we can you know, get you lined up with any of these amazing software developers, software engineers. Okay. All right. We're going to move into our next project now. Thank you, team at Knowledge Rocket. That was awesome. And yeah, technical difficulties. I'm sorry. Sometimes that is the way of the road. It's just how things happen. But now I can't find my cursor, speaking of technical difficulties. So let me see if I can click on anything over here. There we go. There we go. All right. I can move that one off. So the next team that we're gonna look at is a project called Check My Tone. This project was brought to you by Jacob Lairla, Caitlin Flynn, uh, Javon, um, I'm gonna butcher this last name, Masena, um, and Masena Poole, and then Lucas Bush. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. And this is Check My Tone. I often need people to tell me to check my tone. So this will be a good one. Constantly having to proofread and second guess emails before sending them is both time consuming and inefficient. Professionals worry whether or not their emails are produced. Um, one second, I think that we are, we still have somebody sharing their screen from the Zoom. Um, let me go ahead and stop really quick and jump back over to check my tone. Okay.
or maybe that was actually part of the video. Okay, that's my bad. That's a user error. Okay, we'll go ahead and get rolling. Constantly having to proofread and second guess emails before sending them is both time consuming and inefficient. Professionals worry whether or not their emails are producing the correct emotional response. Welcome to Check My Tone. Using API software, Check My Tone scans the email and shows the user what emotional responses are being sent. The emails are checked for emotional values such as anger, sadness, joy, and analytical. These values then being revealed to the user. Thanks to Check My Tone, the user is now able to rethink, revise, and have peace of mind knowing their emails producing the correct emotional responses. Let's get started. First, create an account through the login page following the prompts carefully. Check My Tone offers two types of accounts, a free account and a subscription-based account. More on the differences later. Once the account has been created, copy and paste the email into the analysis box. Click Analyze and Check My Tone will begin scanning the email. Using the API software, Check My Tone has determined these emotions at these values. This will help the user reword the email and work towards the correct emotional response that were originally intended. With the free account, the user is limited to one document with three analytics daily. Unlock the full potential of Check My Tone with a subscription account. With a subscription account, the user now has full access to Check My Tone. The user is now allowed up to 2,000 analytics, unlimited documents, the ability to send the email from within the application, and now unlocks a new feature advanced analytics. This additional feature, not included in the free account, will highlight individual sentences that are producing the specific emotions, which allows for faster revisions and a more appropriately worded email. On the back end, the team needed to use a language that would benefit them in terms of speed, efficiency, and would not hinder their collaborative workflow. JavaScript quickly became the language of choice. With JavaScript, the team is able to make real-time changes to the app during development. Since there's no need to compile, the team is able to work more efficiently by bypassing the need to troubleshoot any errors that may appear on the application. Also possible through JavaScript, the team utilized a unique versioning system, allowing for more edits to the letter and clean merges for a seamless collaborative workflow. Lastly, as the team would add more and more assets to the application, scaling would quickly become an issue. However, JavaScript's scaling system quickly came to the team's aid, as scaling with JavaScript is horizontal, meaning as the team would add more assets, the application would be then scaled accordingly. For a professional and accurate email, write, analyze, send, check my tone. Awesome. Okay, I realized that that was a excuse me. Realized that was a user error. <laughs> I was I started watching the the project and I'm like, oh no, somebody's email is up on the screen. Uh, what do I do? <laughs> and it was actually a part of the the video, and I just had forgotten that that's how their their video was presented. So that is awesome. So I was making sure that no student was actually showing their personal email across YouTube Live um, or something as the as the screen I thought that they were sharing. So. Awesome! What a fun, uh, fun project. Check my tone. Remember that was uh, that was brought to us again by Jacob Lyerla, Caitlin Flynn, uh, Javon Masena, uh, Poole, and uh, Lucas Busk. Uh, so go ahead, team. Talk about yourselves. Talk about your project. Let us know who you are, where you're, where you're from, and um, you know how you got this thing put together. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Can everybody hear me? Okay. You sound great. Awesome. So hi, I'm Caitlin Flynn. Uh, I'm from Reddingville, Washington, and I'm looking for opportunities within the greater Seattle and Bellevue, Washington area for either full stack or front end development positions. Uh, I would say my biggest contribution to this project would be um, consistently pair programming throughout the entire process. We had really great teamwork and just chemistry for building this project. And I uh, helped a lot with the back end functionalities, uh, such as implementing 
implementing some of our user schemas and uh, the crypt password hashing. I also created our uh, design logo and helped with the overall kind of user interface and design feel uh, with some of our team members as well. Um, and then help keep our trailer board and get issues all organized so we knew what we were tra tracking and tracking what and when, so we stayed on track. Um, my favorite feature for our project, I would say, would be implementing the Watson Tone Analyzer because I'd never actually worked with that before. So that was really fun and interesting to, to get to learn more about how to integrate that deep linguistic technology into our application. And it's exciting to get to work with that because I feel like there's a spot for that in the marketplace today um, that's not commonly used. So that was really fun. Um, probably I'd say the most challenging part of our project was just the initial strategy of coming up with what was going to be our plan of attack um, and making sure that we were taking into consideration what sort of technology stack we wanted to use. So we ended up implementing the MERN stack um, and that's really uh, was making sure that we had the, the functionality to get the Watson Tone Analyzer API integrated with that. And that's kind of why we went with that direction. But it did take a little bit of research to initially figure out what direction we wanted to go. But um, yeah, I'm excited to continue to grow and learn and in this new field and, uh, you know, excited to be part of the change that I want to see, which is getting more women involved with software engineering. And just want to thank you guys for taking the time out today and coming out to see our projects. So thank you. Thanks, Caitlin. And you're from Bellevue, Washington area, is that what you said? I'm from Woodinville, Washington. So it's just okay. kind of a hop, a skip and jump from Seattle and Bellevue. Okay, awesome. Caitlin Flynn in the greater Seattle area. Okay, next from Check My Tone. Okay, I will be next. My name is Lukasz Bush, but it's so hard to spell, so people really just call me Luke here. I am from Warsaw in Poland. Uh, I look for any international uh, remote jobs that I, I would be very interested in, such, in working in, in such way. Uh, I believe my biggest contribution to the project will, will be working on backend, designing the API, designing the, and, and configuring the authentication, the validation, also working on database uh, uh, schema. I also designed and coded the landing page, which I am very proud of. I think it's, it looks nice. Uh, I usually am very, very critical about my work, but this time I, I was happy happy with it. Uh, I also worked with Stripe, Stripe payments, and I must say this was my biggest challenge because it was my first contact with this API. At first, I had no, no idea what to do, but thanks to, to their very good documentation, I, I managed to, to solve all the all the problems and and tackle this challenge head on. Uh, I enjoyed this project very much. I think I I grew with with the team and we went with with this project every day. We tackled new challenges all the time, and it really uh, made us better developers. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, before the next person goes, I just want to say uh, Luke is, is one of a couple um, of international students we have from this group today. And, you know, Lambda actually does take on a couple of, you know, a few international students here and there. Um, and yeah, it's amazing to see um, these students not only be able to participate during our Pacific time zone, um, but also be able to, to learn and work effectively in a team uh, in this remote environment across time zones. So thank you so much, Luke, uh, for being here with us today. Uh, that was Lukas uh, Bushk uh, uh, from Poland. So thank you so much. Okay, next. Hello, my name is Jacob Lyrela. I'm from Arizona, but I'm fully open to any relocation within the United States. Also, I'm willing to work remote. Uh, my biggest contribution was was probably more on the front end. Um, I did a lot on the back end, but uh, implementing the context API, which is something I've never worked on going in, was was really awesome. And also doing a lot of the the, the React logic and stuff and working with the team was, was really cool. Uh, what I really, really got excited about was working with the Watson API and how when we got back the information from the API, uh, how we would render that data because depending on, on what data you send in, you sometimes get back uh, different objects and being able to be like, 
okay, well, that's not going to break the code if I don't get back this object and, and working around and writing the code in such a way that it, it adapts to the information that's coming in and rendering that like dyma dynamically instead of just being like, oh, you didn't get this object. Uh, that's just crash now. And that was kind of like the big thing and getting that to work. I feel like that was, that was, that was it. Um, as far as working and what gets me excited is really working with, with people and learning uh, different ways to approach problems that I've may have approached before or approaching new problems and just seeing different approaches based on different people and how they think about problems. It's, it's, it's cool. Like working by yourself, but I really want to work with a strong team. that's going to be like, Hey, you think about it this way, but I think about it this way. And then I can, I can really take that in and evolve the way that I solve problems. It, it's just amazing that my team was really great working through this project. And I would really love to go to a company that, that has great, a great teamwork uh, dynamic and, and to work, as a team is, is what my goal is. And that what makes you excited about uh, programming. Thank you. I love it. Awesome. That was Jacob Lyerla from Arizona, but willing to relocate or work remote, right? Okay. And is Javon here or is, it, is that everybody? No, he is not. Thank okay. you. Awesome. Great. Good stuff, team. Okay. We're going to move on to the next project uh, of Pick Me Collections. And this is nice. It says right on the first title slide who worked on this. But just so that you all uh, hear it first, Pick Me Collections was built by Christopher Marsh, Mark Wong, Christian Garcia, and Robert Hogan. So we'll go ahead and get that up and running. Hello. I'm extremely excited to show you a brand new, easy to use image sharing platform to connect you with friends all over the world called Pick Me Collections. Now let's get started. The uploads page. This is where you will upload all the images that you wish to share with your Pick Me Collections friends. Share some new vacation experiences or maybe reminisce on some old family photos from the 80s. And speaking of friends, let's check out the friends page and find someone to connect with. This page is where you will find new friends, accept friend requests, and send your own friend requests to anyone you would like. Friends are very important in Pick Me Collections. The only images you will see on our site besides our site photos and your own photo uploads are your friends uploads. We want you to share your experiences with only the people that you want to. This is the browse page. Not only does it have some snazzy animations, this page is where you can browse through all of your friends photo uploads and pick some or maybe all to add to your personal collection. Then just press the add photos to collection button and they will be stored in your personal photo collection. This is where all of your photos in your photo collection are placed for you to look back on at any time you would like. Credits are what are used to add photos to your personal collection. Credits can be purchased in bulk here with the option of 100 credits for about $10 or 5 credits for about $1. But not to fear, for every photo upload, you earn a single credit so you can add a photo and get a photo. This page is where you will see all the images that you have uploaded. You can look back at all the images you have uploaded as long as you have had an account with us. All the images here are images that are browsable to your friends and they can add any of them to their personal collection. We had a ton of fun developing this. You can also check out the About Us page for some quick behind the scenes info on who we are and what we made. And we hope that you have a great time using it and connecting with your friends and loved ones in the easiest, most streamlined way. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, crew over at Pick Me Collections. Um, yeah, so something just came, came to my mind. Um, we'll make sure that we get um, links to these projects in our description for this video um, as it you know compiles back over to a recorded video from live. We'll make sure that we make an edit to our description so that we get links to all your projects if they're not already there. Um, so that way people can kind of check them out firsthand and click on that about page. Okay, Pick Me Collections, go ahead and tell us who you are um, what you all did and, uh, yeah, excited to hear it. Let's see. Let me see who's here so I can call on somebody. Maybe they're having trouble unmuting themselves. So we got Mar Wong. No. All right. I am not sure that I see 
Anybody from, oh wait, Robert. Is that you? No? Okay. All right, the team, the mysterious team of Pick Me Collections. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess you can click that About Me page and you can kind of figure out who those students were. It's a really cool, fun, exciting project. I know they built um, like a social networking platform and I got to talk to the to the couple of individuals who put that together. They mentioned that it was really, really fun to sort of be able to figure out how all that data should work and how those relationships should work um, within those models. So really, really cool uh, problem to, to be challenged to solve. Okay, awesome. Let's move on, right on then. Uh, once again, if you're, you know, if you're just joining us now, this is, uh, the, these students worked, um, you know, over the last few months um, to, to learn these skills and they put them to use um, here to build a really sophisticated, fun project. Um, the next team that we're going to hear from is Closet Roulette. This is a really fun, kind of a, a snazzy project that I'm really excited for a song. I mean, it's a, they're all amazing. This one's pretty fun too. So, okay, buckle up. We're going to go ahead and jump right into Closet Roulette. Closet Roulette was brought to us by Ellen Nichols. Justin Matthew, Devin Bacon, Nadu Robert, um, and Julian Pinero. Pinero. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Do you find yourself wearing the same outfits all the time? Would you like to find new ensembles that make use of your existing wardrobe? Introducing Closet Roulette, the new way to shake up your style. Our app makes it easier than ever to turn the same old clothes into a brand new look. Just snap some pictures of your clothes, or import them from social media, and let our algorithm do the rest. Don't like the results? Try as many times as you like, or if you're feeling inspired, pick something to start with and generate new ideas from there. When you find an outfit you like, save it for later. Add dates to track your style choices over time, or plan your outfits in advance. You'll even receive reminders and suggestions based on local weather conditions. But Finding a new outfit isn't the only thing Closet Roulette is good for. Our My Closet feature makes it easy to browse your clothes and see your options at a glance. Intuitive categories and custom tags make it easy to organize and browse your wardrobe without opening a single drawer. With Closet Roulette, you can even bring your clothes with you. Take the guesswork out of your clothes shopping by consulting your closet right from your dressing room. We're adding new features all the time making it easier for you to manage your wardrobe at home and on the go. Closet Roulette. Make fashion fun. All right. I'm definitely inspired to go and take a look at my wardrobe now. Okay. Team from Closet Roulette. Go ahead. You are up. All right. Um, hey, my name is Devin Bacon. I am in the San Francisco Bay Area looking for work here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just had a really good time on this project. I managed the DevOps primarily, uh, making sure that we had a stable live deployment. Um, I also worked on the navigation component, making it completely responsive and adaptive to any screen size, um, as well as creating a lot of the, uh, or helping with a lot of the dynamic components that interface with our backend, as well as our uh, payment scheme or payment um, data on the back end. And uh, yeah, it's just really fun. I, a lot of the DevOps experience that I got actually makes me really want to dig into Firebase and AWS and kind of explore those options as uh, alternatives because I know they have a lot to offer. Um, and yeah, just the whole the whole team dynamic is was a great learning experience. Just being able to sync up with everybody on my team and make sure that we were all working in a very uh, cooperative way and helping each other whenever we could. That was probably one of the better parts of this project. Just, um, yeah, it was a great experience. And it makes me look forward to future opportunities in that respect. I'd really love to get into the workforce and be a part of a team that has that dynamic workflow and is uh, just has that group growth mentality uh, where you can grow as an individual and as a group. So. Wonderful. Also. Awesome. And remind us again who you are and where you're from. Yeah, uh, Devin Bacon from the San Francisco Bay Area. Perfect. Awesome. 
Next from Closet Roulette. Hi, my name is Ellen Mitchells. I'm from Salem, Oregon, but open to relocating for the right position. Um, I worked on uh, the initial server and data model structures to get us started, and then that got added on to, of course. I worked on the Stripe integration on the front and back end. I built out the My Closet component and some other just sort of minor um, front end polishing um, bits and pieces here and there. And um, like Devin said, this was a great chance to work with the team, um, just really learn a lot in a very short amount of time and, and come up with a project that we're pretty proud of. Cool. Ellen Nichols from Salem, Oregon, you said? Yep. Awesome. Well done. Okay, thank you so much. Anyone else from Closet Roulette? All right. Uh, my name is Justin Matthew. I'm from New York City. Uh, preferably looking for a job in the area as well, but I'm not against relocating. As for this job, uh, well, this project, I was working on the image management, so basically just uploading and uh, making sure they're retrievable and storage size wasn't too large. Uh, favorite aspect was definitely the group feature as well. Uh, first time working on a group with a group and really enjoyed it. And the project was fun. And the learning experience was definitely good. Uh, first time actually working with images, so. But yeah, overall, this was a great experience. Awesome, perfect. And once again, who you are, where you're from? Justin, uh, New York City. Justin Matthew from New York City, perfect. Uh, okay, who's next from Closet Roulette? Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm Lady Robert from Nigeria. I'm open to relocation for the right opportunity. Also open to remote opportunities. So I think I work most on the authentication aspect of this project. Uh, I think the, the hardest was figuring out uh, what API worked with was the same grid API. Integrating that into a local authentication was the most fun I had on this project. I also liked the group process we ha have with my team. Uh, this was my first time working with the team. And it was so much fun. And I'm looking forward to uh, working with more teams in the future and improving my knowledge base in this new career field that I've taken. OK, and it's Nadu Robert, right? Nadu Robert from Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. Another one of our international students. Amazing. So yeah, it's it always really just shocks me how well um, teams sort of self organize uh, dealing, like I said, with those separate time zones and how it just shows how much hard work you know these students put in to put into these projects. So thank you, Nadu. Um, is there anyone else? Did, is Julian here? Yes. Uh, okay, Julian. I'm Julian. Yes. I'm having some connection problems. So man, I'm sorry if I cut out, but I'm right now in Finland. I'm originally from Peru in South America, and I worked mostly in the backend, in the authentication part, and this has been a great experience. Working with my team has been amazing, and I'm really proud of what we have done together. And I've learned so much. I started this without knowing or having any kind of experience in anything related to computer uh, science or development. I'm really proud of what, how, how far we have gone. All right. Thank you, Julian. And it's Julian Panero, right? Yes. OK. Also an international student from, uh, you said, from Finland? Yes, but originally from Peru. OK, originally from Peru, living in Finland, looking for potential remote opportunities, opportunities out there uh, locally. Thank you so much. OK. Awesome. Wow. This has been so much fun. It's fun to, you know, I got, I get a chance as a, you know, part being part of the web team here to, um, to see these students kind of put these projects together toward the tail end and present on what we call the capstone review panel. And that's, you know, I got a chance to do that uh, this time around um, with every single one of these projects. And now I get to see a chance for them to show them off these really fun videos. So it's really cool. Okay. We're going to move now into the next 
next steps group. That's hard to say 10 times fast. Um, it's kind of a fun, a really fun project, uh, kind of pointed at our educational model and system. Um, and it was built by the team of Aaron Faulkner, Chaba Balo, um, uh, Abraham Bueno, Claudio Gonzalez, um, and I think Eric Andrade and Sean Stewart. So um, fun stuff. And if I mention anything wrong there or anything, just let me know. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with next steps. Next Steps is here to help you help your students. Once they've learned from the experts, it is time for them to head out into the real world. To truly succeed, they'll need a little help. This is what career services are for. Now it's your turn. To help you in your endeavors, we've created Next Steps to help you track your students' career search. Who are they looking at? How many applications have they put out? Who has their resume? Have they followed up? Hunter.co is a great place to start. Have your students sign up there with your company's link and get a quick snapshot of their work here on Next Steps. We also support GitHub. Make sure your students stay active in their development by continuing to use GitHub. Make sure they're creating, committing, and pushing by just glancing at a page. This is a tool to make sure they're hitting each and every milestone. This is Next Steps. Okay, team from Next Steps, why don't you go ahead and take the floor and let us know who you are, what you built, where you're from. Um, I'm excited to hear all about it. My name is Aaron Faulkner. Uh, I live just north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm primarily looking around Pittsburgh, but I'm willing to relocate uh, if the company shares my passions. I'm not interested in remote working because, as everybody here knows, I have really loud kids that run around behind me all day. So uh, it's made uh, working on this project and every project at Lambda fairly difficult, but it, and it took a lot of perseverance to get to this place that we're at now. So I'm glad to be here. Um, for next steps, uh, I started with working out the uh, the initial structure of things. Uh, I worked on some pieces like the breadcrumbs that we needed initially, but eventually got phased out for other pieces. Um, <clears throat> I also did the voiceover work for the video you just watched. My major contribution, though, was implementing uh, the Stripe API and everything, and that also included my my greatest challenge. And because we initially started with just a single charge but we had to switch to the subscription-based uh, charging, and uh, it uses very different uh, ways of doing that. Um, and then uh, there was also an issue with using test data versus real data because everybody keeps trying to use the test data, but in our, in our production environment, you can only use real cards. Um, so if you're interested in trying it out, uh, the standard is currently charged at one cent. Um, but uh, before, before Lambda, working on all my hobbies and everything. Um, I always thought as programming as like this, this really high level out of reach type thing. And every time I would, I would run into programming and butt my head up against it, and like running into a brick wall. But over these past six months, getting down and dirty with the programming and being able to learn it, I've, I've been able to embrace that excitement that I have for it. And I can't wait to get back to my personal projects, but also be able to apply everything that I've learned these past six months to somebody and to be able to really be used in, in a commercial setting. So I'm really excited. And this has been a lot of fun, thank you. Awesome, thank you. And that's Aaron Faulkner, just outside the Pittsburgh area. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, anyone next from Next Steps? Hey, I'm uh, Sean Stewart, I'm from Tampa, Florida. Um, so my main contribution on this project was the backend, setting up the schemas for the database, um, as well as our endpoints. Um, and also did a little bit of styling on the front end. Um, it's just been a great learning experience working with a decent sized group of people, collaborating with them. Just really proud of our project here. 
Wonderful. Uh, who are you again <laughs> and where are you from? John Stewart from Tampa, Florida. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. Hey, anyone else from Next Steps? Uh, oh. uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Abraham Bueno and I'm from uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I work mainly with the state management of the application, so creating the endpoints on the front end and I also created some endpoints on the back end if they were not implemented yet. Uh, the nice thing about this project was that I was able to learn some new things with uh, Redux. Uh, there was a new package that came out called Iguazu, so that was uh, really nice to use for uh, promises. Uh, and for and I, I was also able to learn from uh, other parts of the project, such as the API for the GitHub and the Hunter. So yeah, I was able to learn quite a bit about that, so that was nice. and. Uh, I also learned some parts of the building part uh, with Aaron. I worked with him for about uh, three days, so that was nice to learn. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was uh, good working with this team. That's uh, that's all for me. Great. That was yeah. Abraham. Remind us again who you are. Uh, Abraham Bueno from uh, Chicago, Illinois. Perfect. Awesome. Anyone else for next steps? Okay. All right. Just another reminder about how um, amazing like this process is um, for students to come into Lambda School not knowing hardly anything at all um, and get to where they're at today, having put together and worked on a team but their own, you know, in their own accord and their own pro process and put put all this software together. It's 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 absolutely amazing to see. And uh, there were others on that team, um, but but yeah, for, uh, unfortunately they're not here with us. Um, I just also want to uh, to just kind of muse here for a second. Um, working in a remote environment uh, on camera. Um, you know, with the ability to sort of hide and, and uh, you know, turn off your webcam and whatnot. Um, usually you see instructors kind of casual in t-shirts and hats and things. And I just have to point out that this group is the best dressed group um, that has ever presented. You guys all look so sharp. Um, you look well put together. Um, you look professional. And yeah, it's it's really exciting to see that. So Thank you for putting in the extra added effort. I know that sometimes we forget um, as we as we work remote for so long what it's like to um, to you know actually go into an office and and dress um, you know at least semi professionally. Um, and I'm the biggest culprit. I always love my t-shirt and hat. It's just my work uniform, my Lambda work uniform. So, okay, let's move into um, one of our final remaining groups. I think we only have a couple left here. And let's, uh, let's hear from the merge team. Um, this is a really cool tool, if I can find my cursor. Wow, I can never find this thing with multiple screens, screen sharing. OK, here we go. All right, merge was brought to us by the team of the students, uh, uh, Alex Figliola, Hilal Aisani, Jackie Rorich, Amanda Mock, and Yasin Schumann. And we'll go ahead and start the project video. For the project manager, being able to keep track of progress on multiple projects is mission critical. However, with today's tools, all of this collected data can feel overwhelming. Introducing Merge. Merge allows the project manager to oversee the progress of all projects and teams. Utilizing cutting edge analytics, a project manager gains in-depth insight into their data. With granularity, teams can now pinpoint areas requiring improvement and better time utilization. When a project manager logs into the application, they are immediately greeted with a list of all projects that are currently in progress. Within these projects, they are able to see the teams as well as the progress log for each project. Given this information, the project manager can take notes and make pipeline decisions accordingly. 
Merge immediately notifies the project manager of any conflicts or missed deadlines, allowing them to make decisions such as relocating assets or workloads between teams to help speed up production. On the back end, the team needed a language that would help them work collaboratively in a seamless, timely manner. So it was decided that JavaScript would be the language of choice. The developers wanted universal access to Merge. By choosing JavaScript, the lingua franca of the online web, the developers ensured just that. JavaScript enjoys one of the largest developer communities in the world. This provides the benefit of having access to an ever-growing number of libraries and functionality. Forward-thinking engineering and design is hard-coded into Merge's DNA. Moving past the language, let's see how Merge operates in the back end. Merge pulls data from Trello and GitHub when creating progress graphs for projects and teams. Trello is essentially the to-do list for teams. Developers on each team can grab an asset to work on and upload their scripts, which will then go through the revision process. Once approved, the developer's script will then be uploaded to GitHub, where the master script will reside. Thanks to Merge, both Trello and GitHub progress is tracked and displayed in simple graphs for the project manager to inspect. With Merge, the project manager's life has become simpler allowing them to work smarter and more efficiently without the hassle of over-the-shoulder monitoring. Get started with Merge today and manage the five projects for free. Get organized, get efficient, get Merge. Amazing, awesome, good, good stuff. Quality video, some fun animations, really, really good stuff. And yeah, I was triggered when you said get Merge, it's just, I guess we all get it as programmers, you know, to have to go and merge to master or whatever. I think that triggered a lot of us there. Get merge, get merge. It's, it's kind of funny. Okay, the team from get merge, go ahead. Now I said it, the team from merge, go ahead and talk about your stack, talk about what you built, um, what how you put this thing together. Hi, my name is Amanda Mock. Um, I'm part of the team with merge. I am based out in Los Angeles, California and I helped assist with the front end and back end. We actually um, had a strike element that was built with the billing for this and also incorporated React Strat for the beautiful uh, UI that you see on this particular uh, uh, database. And um, my biggest accomplishment is I actually came from a marketing background. I didn't have any coding experience, so I really suggest whoever that's interested in Lambda School to definitely join because coming from somebody that didn't have any background, this last six months has been a great experience and garnered a lot of um, classmates that I really enjoy working with. And not only that, a lot of teamwork. So that's my biggest accomplishment and achievement. And I really love working with Lambda and I really suggest whoever's interested to come join us. Awesome, Amanda Mock from Los Angeles. That is correct. Okay, thank you so much. Who's next? Hi, I'm Jackie Rourke. Um, I'm from Bismarck, North Dakota. I'm open to remote and uh, local positions only. Um, I guess my part in this is I took a huge part in management. Uh, so I kind of uh, managed Trello board. Um, I did the landing page. Um, kind of uh, touched on front end and back end. I kind of wanted to be able to see it all happen at once. Um, and I came up with the name and the logo. So. Awesome. Jackie Rorick from? Bismarck, North Dakota. Don't forget it. OK, who's next? Hi, I'm Alex Figliola. I am from New York, currently residing in Florida. On Merge, I worked on the dashboard and a couple other elements that sort of incorporated data into it. The most fun I think I had was building the data visualizations, getting to play around with some of the more artistic features of HTML and CSS, and kind of revamping my knowledge of the back end when it came time to tie everything together. So this was a really fun project, a good way to <clears throat> tie every piece of the education together right before we exit. Okay, thank you. And it remind us again who you are? I am Alex from New York. Alex from New York. I've got quite a few of you from New York. Okay, good stuff. Um, anyone else from Merge? I think that is all of us present. Okay, great. Awesome, okay. Uh, we're gonna move into our final project here. Uh, what we're gonna do 
Uh, but before that, I just want to remind everyone who you know may be joining us now, um, you know what Lambda School is, what we're all about, um, kind of what our mission is and what our goal is, goal is here. Um, you know, at Lambda School, we don't charge admission until you actually graduate and go out and get a job. Um, you know, we we have an amazing um, curriculum, an amazing um, engineering team, uh, instruction team put together uh, for each program that we offer. Uh, currently, we offer a full stack web engineering program, which is what these students just went through that incorporates into our CS program as well. We also are offering classes in data science and, and um, iOS development. Um, and coming this fall here in the next couple of weeks, we're starting our Android class and our user experience design class as well. Um, so we're not just trying to focus in one area, one facet. We're actually trying to you know, sort of become this multi-armed bandit, um, this school that is the, the de facto place for higher learning in this country. Um, and worldwide, as you've seen that we have a variety of international students who've joined this program. Um, I have personally seen this program change lives and it has been an amazing experience for me to um, be a part of the experience where we're lowering the bar to education, um, but we're not lowering the quality of, our, of those that we educate uh, because these students are, are absolutely phenomenal. And I would 100% stand by this, that I would hire each and every one of them where I, um, you know, hiring for a position on my team. Um, and that just comes from a professional from the industry. So if you're joining us as a new hiring partner or if you're somebody who has worked with us in the past, uh, go ahead and reach out to those, uh, you know, to, you know, by way of the description um, it, to, this, to this YouTube link. You'll be able to find ways to contact our career services team to get a hold of any of these students. Um, you know, we've had students in, you know, in Florida, Chicago, New York, um, uh, various parts of California, Seattle, um, North Dakota. We have students all over the country and even joining in from places like uh, Poland, Finland, um, and of course, Nigeria. So it's really amazing to see the, this program reach around the world. Um, and it's really, really inspiring for me to have been a part of it. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and move into our last group now. Um, this project is called SESHO. And we're going to go ahead and just, uh, yeah, keep continuing the flow that we're at. And we'll have that group speak to, to their project once, uh, once they get through. Hi there. My name is Anthony, and today I'll be guiding you through the process of creating and booking an appointment with our new and exciting scheduling application session. Let's begin. We'll start with the customer landing page. You're free to browse appointments or you can log into your Sesho account and book an appointment. Creating an account with Sesho is easy. Simply log in with Google or Facebook. Or register a new account with your email address. Once signed in, you're ready to book your first appointment. Enter in the first few characters of your city and let our custom search engine handle the rest. The top-rated businesses offering appointments today are showcased in the Featured Appointments section of the app. Continue down the page to view all the available appointments in your area. Or refine your search by appointment type or time. Once you find what you're looking for, simply select, confirm, and voila, your appointment is booked. To view the details of your newly booked appointment or any other appointments you've booked, you can visit the user profile page. If you're a business owner looking to grow and expand with Sesho, simply navigate to our business page. You can start by creating an account with a little more than your email and business address. Easily locate your business's information with our autofill feature. Businesses are able to post up to 10 appointments each month. Upgrading to Sesho Premium will enable businesses to create an unlimited number of appointments each month. 
Socios Manager dashboard allows you to easily manage all of your new business appointments from a single page. We provide you with a large calendar, as well as options to view your schedule by day, week, or month. Creating an appointment is just as easy as booking one. Simply provide the details of your appointments and click Submit. No sweat. Double check the details of your appointment by selecting it from the calendar. If you spot a typo or something else comes up, simply delete the appointment, as long as it has not already been booked by a customer, and it will be removed. When a customer books an appointment, the status of that appointment is updated for all users across the platform. The customer will receive a notification that confirms the booking. The business will receive a notification that the appointment has been booked, and any other users viewing that specific appointment will no longer have access to it. It updates in real time. Sesho connects customers and businesses in a more dynamic way, enabling customers to manage their appointments from a single application and businesses to enhance their operations. So, whether you're looking to maximize the potential of your business, or just booking some appointments for the day, command your future with Sesho. All right, Sesho team, good stuff. Really, really cool. All of these projects, I don't see one of these that doesn't is this like isn't useful for me. Like all of them, I would use. I'm certain of it. Um, okay, so the team at Sesho uh, was brought to us by uh, the product Sesho was brought to us by Harrison Brock, Jeffrey Flynn, uh, Henry Kim, Mark Marchant, and Anthony Caldera. So why don't you all take the floor and let us know who you are and uh, you know what you worked on? Okay. Uh, my name is Anthony. I'm the one who is speaking in the video. Uh, I'm from Washington, D.C., uh, but I grew up in New York and I lived in California, so I'm pretty much open to going anywhere. Um, I mostly contributed to the business functionality of the web page um, or of the web app. I helped make the functionalities for businesses to make an appointment, uh, look at the appointment details, um, and hook that up between the front end and the back end. And the second major contribution I had was actually integrating Stripe and setting up the premium uh, features and payment functionality. Awesome. And that was your name again? Where are you Anthony. from? Anthony from Washington, D.C. Thanks, Anthony. Awesome. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Flynn. I am from, <clears throat> excuse me. I currently reside in the greater Philadelphia area. Um, for this project, I was heavily involved in establishing, establishing our uh, server side to client side connections. So all the real time updates that you saw um, in our custom search engine was, was in large part due to uh, my efforts with that. And then I was also pretty, pretty heavily involved with the UI design. I wasn't entirely satisfied with the initial wireframes we got, so I sketched out a more intuitive design that made more sense for the user, proposed the changes to the client, got approved, and we went ahead and implemented them. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I contributed. Um, had a great time, and once again, my name is Jeffrey Flynn, and I am from the greater Philadelphia area. Thank you. Thanks, Jeffrey. Uh, hello, my name is Harrison Brock. I'm from southeastern Kentucky. And on this project, I've helped with creating the uh, login system, connecting it with Google Owl, Owl and with uh, user and password. And, uh, displaying you know, upcoming appointments for the user. And again, I'm from Southeastern Kentucky. Now I'm mostly looking for a remote work. All right, Harrison Brock, thank you. Hello. Hi, my name is uh, Henry Kim. Uh, I'm from uh, Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. So I'm uh, one of the international students. For those who don't know where that is, that's the uh, that's an about an hour away from Vancouver, 
And I'm looking to work locally, but I'm also open to, open to the options of working remotely or simply relocating. Uh, one of my favorite things to uh, work on this project was the uh, toast function, which is the little notification with, uh, that you get when, whenever you log in or simply get any book, uh, appointments that are booked or you booked. Um, that part was difficult for me because it's, uh, I had to sort of intercept any changes that uh, went in the back, uh, back end. But uh, with the help of the uh, Google, who, um, Stack Overflow, and the uh, help of my uh, colleagues and friends, uh, I got through. And the project overall was a challenging one, but very fun going through. All right. And who are you again? My name is Henry Kemp. I'm from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah, somebody wants to um, mention that I also edited the video, too. Oh, nice. Nice work. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? From... Yeah, so I'm the last to go from our group. Um, my name is Mark Marchant, Cod, Massachusetts. I live now in Long Beach, California, and here about seven years. I used to work as a tax consultant. After that, it's about four and a half years, broke into the programming world. Love it. Um, my biggest contribution to this, pro to this project was probably building out our skeleton for Firebase and React. And, um, you know, we made some changes to it, but I was fine with that because we had a skeleton, something to work with. So I worked on user, the business setting pages, and we used uh, React Context for that. So we were able to pass the props from the context to the user setting pages and change the information based on the uh, OAuth sign-in or the email sign-in. I was very excited. I still am very excited about learning new technologies. Um, one of this, one of the texts we were going over during this project was uh, Go. So any company that wants to implement Go, I really want to work for you guys, and um, I'm willing to work remote or work local, Long Beach, California. Uh, again, Mark Marchant, and uh, I just want to give a shout out to my whole group. We all worked well together, and uh, couldn't have made this project without them. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of pride coming through from these projects. Um, fabulous. I think that's everyone from the group. Is there anyone else who would like to introduce themselves who didn't get a chance to? I don't know if had anyone join or anything like that. Okay. Stop screen sharing. And yeah, I just want to remind everybody who tuned in today um, who we are and what we're all about. Uh, we are Lambda School. This is our most recent batch of graduates. So I hope you can join me in celebrating. Um, you know, send a shout out to them in the comments of this live video YouTube link. Let them know that you're excited for them. Um, if you are a hiring partner and you're interested in any one of these candidates, if they're in your area, um, yeah, go ahead and contact us in our description. We have ways for you to be able to reach out to us and contact us. Um, I also just want to say it's amazing. I think we had representatives today in this group from five or six different countries now uh, in, in, in counting. Um, it's, it's absolutely fabulous uh, to witness this, this program and uh, see the hard work that these students put into these projects. Um, and I think I speak for everyone here at the Lambda team when I say that we couldn't be prouder. Um, we're excited to continue to uh, to work with um, any and all of these students to, um, you know, to move into the next phase of their career as well. Um, Lambda School is amazing. It is changing lives. Um, it, is, it is an amazing platform for you to come into and to, uh, you know, change your career, change the trajectory of your life. Um, we've seen it happen over and over and over again, and we're excited to continue to celebrate with these students as they go out into the real world. So, um, check us out at lambdaschool.com. Uh, you can you can follow any of the any of the links to any you know, any contact information here in the description. Um, and if you have any other questions, just feel free to reach out, say hi, um, and we're excited to see where this group ends up. So once again, class of you know summer of 2018, congratulations! Uh, you are all amazing, and uh, thank you so much for your hard work. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and call it there. Um, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out.